Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. I've been studying the bad weather of 1925, which will be the topic of another video. The southeastern United States had their worst drought since 1895 during September 1925. And associated with this drought was their worst heat wave. This graph shows the average daily maximum temperatures for every day in South Carolina since 1895. 1925 temperatures are shown as the red line. The hottest day on record in South Carolina was September 4th, 1925. You can see that a lot of record temperatures were set during 1925, particularly in August and September. But the official high temperature record for South Carolina was set at Columbia on June 29th, 2012, and the temperature was 113 degrees. This graph shows 2012 temperatures in South Carolina in red. You can see that there was a spike in temperatures at the end of June. This graph shows all daily maximum temperatures recorded at Columbia, South Carolina since 1930. And you can see the record temperature of 113 degrees Fahrenheit on June 29, 2012. So I decided to take a look and see if this temperature is credible. The record temperature was set here in Columbia, and there's another station 38 miles away at Sumter, South Carolina. The hottest temperature recorded at Sumter during 2012 was 103 degrees, which was 10 degrees cooler than the record at Columbia. And looking back through the historical record, there were plenty of years with temperatures as hot or hotter than 2012 at Sumter. This graph shows Columbia temperatures during the summer of 2012 in green and Sumter temperatures in blue. You can see the temperatures at Columbia were consistently much hotter than at Sumter. Average daily maximum temperatures at Columbia have been skyrocketing since about the year 1970. And the frequency of 90 degree days at Columbia has also been increasing for a long time. But the rural station at Sumter shows a completely different pattern. The average daily maximum temperatures have declined sharply since 1930. And the frequency of 90 degree days at Sumter has also declined sharply over the last 90 years. Sumter used to be hotter than Columbia, but temperatures there have declined, while temperatures at Columbia have increased sharply. In 1952, temperatures at Columbia and Sumter were very similar. And they weren't tremendously different in 1972 either, although Columbia had gotten a little bit hotter than Sumter. But by 1992, Columbia had gotten considerably hotter than Sumter. And by 2012, temperatures at Columbia had gotten much hotter than Sumter, about 10 degrees. It seems pretty clear that the thermometer at Columbia is suffering massive urban heat island effects. It's in the middle of a big city. The 113 degree temperature recorded there on June 29, 2012 is simply not credible. The thermometer data from Columbia is clearly defective and should not be part of the temperature record. But the story gets worse. Not only do they use the defective Columbia temperature data, but they also homogenize the bad data from Columbia into surrounding rural stations. This is the measured thermometer data from Sumter. It shows a strong cooling trend, but after adjustments, the trend disappears. For all of the United States Historical Climatology Network stations in South Carolina, the daily maximum temperatures have been trending downwards, but after adjustments, the cooling trend gets turned into a warming trend. Temperatures prior to the year 2000 are cooled by about 1 degree Fahrenheit via the adjustments, and recent temperatures are warmed. This is the real hockey stick graph. Temperatures are being tampered with by U.S. government agencies to create a fake appearance of warming. They're not only using severely defective data in the official U.S. temperature record database, but they're also smearing this UHI contaminated data into surrounding rural stations. Because of all these incredibly bad practices by U.S. government agencies, 
There's nothing remotely credible anymore about either the U.S. temperature record or the global temperature record. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on climate propaganda for almost 16 years. You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.